Yeah, we've been working on it for a long time actually, and we even almost composed the whole album, and then we deleted it completely and started again. So right now we're again we're pretty much on the final run of the songs. We just have like 30% of the album is still unfinished, but other than that, it's going great. Not yet, but it's probably gonna be out a year from now. A year from now. So Along in those the, lines. In the next fall, something like that? Uh, fall or, or winter. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the timelines are so long. If we go to the studio in, in summer, it means that it's gonna come out later, late that yeah. year or even like next year. Well, it, it, I'm, I would say we never, we never try to find an album and repeat it sound-wise again. So it's gonna be very different from the last one, mm -hmm. and again, it's gonna be a different mix of elements, completely. And that's something that we, we always do. And the time that we find out that we cannot do it anymore, we cannot find a new approach or new aspect to it, the stuff, the music anymore. Then it means that we have come to the end, and and so far. So good, I mean, it sounds, so it sounds fast. great. Yeah, so... <laughs> <coughs> but, uh, I'd say the new album is gonna, sound-wise, it's gonna be more black metal than doom metal. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's not gonna be that long songs this time. I mean, they are long for sure. It's very hard to get out of the 15-minute format that we find found on very sacked, but it's gonna, not gonna be 30-minute songs or anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we we really didn't want to repeat ourselves also, also in that point, like also in just this direction. yeah 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 definitely they're gonna be uh, on our scale they're gonna be radio hits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and on our radio, I think. I don't, I still don't think <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a real radio hit. Then. Compared to our previous works, it's gonna it's gonna be more accessible. Okay, like good. You said. <laughs> good for us because we are a radio and it's ever <laughs> difficult to, to you know to, to share your songs. We have yeah. to cut them and you know it's it's not so good. We don't. <laughs> Out yeah, new the, album. the magic just happens. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's Henry who, who does like most of the work, and he does it at home. He can yeah, I mean everybody can contribute to the process and give riffs and songs and ideas. And usually we either just send him the material, mm -hmm. or we go to his place and we have sessions with him, where we start arranging the songs. Mm -hmm. It might be that the next day everything we did is gone already, but he's <laughs> he's very fast when he's working and when he, when he starts building up a song he can write five or six minutes in no time with all the orchestrations and instruments but if he feels like ah this is not good enough he just press delete or put it in some <laughs> folder that's hidden somewhere and it's amazing what kind of stuff you can find there over the years <laughs> <In those> folders. <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you find them legendary riffs <laughs> will never be released yes <clears throat> for the good of <laughs> yes, we think it's like from the deleted part of Munsoro, maybe a seven on eight good bands can grow and publish a lot of uh, good albums. At least seven or eight bands, I don't know. Actually, it was uh, 450 copies, there's just 100 of each edition because there are different ones like mm -hmm. just black plain vinyl or white or splatter okay. and then the die hard one that was 150 copies mm -hmm. so yeah the, the whole point was if, if you make such a like deluxe item mm -hmm. it's very costly to produce anyway there's no point of pressing it to 2000 pieces or something because if even 100 of them don't get sold the company would get bankrupt completely oh my God. And so it was done ba based on the demand and 
assumptions of how 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 many people would yeah. buy it, and it was very carefully planned in in every stage of it. Okay. But you sold all, all the copies. Yeah, they, they so, sold out pretty fast. I would say if we had like 50 more, it would okay. would be still sold out. But okay. I think it was very cleverly calculated how many okay. sets would move. I thought they were sold out or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Venom. No, I don't, I, I, I don't even like Venom. No. At all? No, no I, I really don't. Uh, battery, I do. They, they copied Venom a bit. <laughs> beginning and then they copied Manowar. They made it so much better. <laughs> One of my favorites, definitely. And Copy. You probably can hear it in Montero's music as well. Yeah. Oh. When, when you hear Man of War in music, Monsoor's music, it means that we've been copying Bathory. <laughs> and, <laughs> and yeah, there are lots of bands like Enslaved that influence us all actually, mm -hmm. very much. Also, like the side of the language thing that you, you don't have to sing in English. Yeah. It was one of the first bands that we came across that actually made our, us think that, that wait a minute, you, you don't need to sing English, you can do this in your own language or... Mm -hmm. Well, it wasn't their own language, it's Icelandic or whatever they were yeah. using, but... But <laughs> it's anyway... ancestors' language. Yeah, it's more, much more interesting to do it in different ways than all the other bands. And of course, we all have our personal preferences, like Slayer and so on, which doesn't have anything to do with Moon Sorrow. Yeah. And then King Crimson have been very influential for many of us. And you can also hear it in, in the music. Like mm -hmm. we have this progressive rock element, and that's definitely from from there. And, but I would say black metal, Scandinavian black metal, is the key, and like many bands. And Satan. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it is not a band, so. It is a band. <laughs> UK. <laughs> that's the true Satan. Very few of them because I don't follow music uh -huh. anymore. I just listen to what I used to listen when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really find that many new bands. There are a lot of interesting bands, of course. Music is constantly evolving. It's not like all the music after 2000 has to be crap. There are a lot of good bands, but I'm just too lazy to check them out. <laughs> I know yeah. a few, but. Yeah, it, it's it's the same thing. Unfortunately, for example, at, at in '98 or '99, I grew tired of, of of the black metal explosion because there were so many bands coming up that I couldn't follow it anymore. And then I realized, okay, I, most of these are crappy anyway, and I'm not interested in that. And then after a few years, I started listening to the new bands again, and I think black metal is still doing very well right now. Mm -hmm. For a few years already, and that's interesting. But but it's very hard to when <laughs> when you you've lived the years where you find your favorite bands and all these things to follow all the time some new forms of metal, for example. I do listen to a lot of other stuff also, but it's very hard to find new metal bands that would really catch me. Well, there are many reasons, uh, but I think one thing is, well, I can only speak for Finnish hmm? bands, and I, I know that we didn't have national identity when it comes to music or metal or rock music, really. We had some really good like local bands singing in Finnish, but we didn't have any breakthrough internationally until some bands started to do what they really want to do in their own way, hmm. and not trying to copy Swedish or um, American bands or something. And they started really gaining attention. And other bands, other young upcoming bands realized, okay, we can do this on our own way. We can do this a little bit similarly or something and take influence. And suddenly they're, it's just growing and growing in, in mass. And you get this huge scene that's just lifting up. And in Finland, it's, it just catched on during the like early 2000. Mm -hmm. 
But um, there are no, I don't know, economical reasons in your opinion, or political ones, social ones. There are just a, a, a as you say, a musical things. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't say Finland. Finland has always been a very safe and boring country when it comes <laughs> to the economy and politics. So there are no big uproars anywhere in our near history. Yeah, and if, if you have a band, if you want to make money with a band, you're already going somewhere like wrong tracks. Mm -hmm. Because none of the bands who formed and became successful and influential, they never started it for the money. And it would be the worst business move to <laughs> form a band. <laughs> like, anything is better than that. Okay, you can just go to pop and something like that yeah and even <laughs> even that is difficult you have to be really talented to make it in, in pop music yeah my advice would be to work for bands and not, not for money not not work in a band but work for bands like be a technician or whatever outside the band so that the band pays you then you get money the band, yeah. the band doesn't <laughs> get money <laughs> <laughs> okay Thank you. This short interview is finished. You are really, really appreciated. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming.